Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Bill Harris, and this is Life Questions. As you may know, this program receives viewer questions about life, which we in turn turn over to a local panel of ministers for prayer and biblical research. Well, we thank you for your questions, and now you get to hear your answers from a biblical perspective. Our guest ministers are here, and they are Pastor Rick Shear of the Living Hope Assembly of God, and that church is located in St. Mary's followed by Apostle Ryan Benruth, and he is with the Well Apostolic Center in Lima, Ohio. Our next pastor is Tim Benjamin of Wayne Street United Methodist Church at St. Mary's. And rounding off our panel is Pastor Kelly Waltz of Spencerville Trinity United Methodist Church. We're happy to have you all here. Thank you, Bill. thank you. All righty, as we look into these questions uh, from our viewers, the first one, how should Christians make choices about movies and music. Is it okay to watch movies with violence, bad language, and other questionable scenes? What do you have, what do you have to say about that? Well, I, I think that the, the I, I think the thing is, is, you know, as somebody who has watched movies with all of those things in them, uh, is what, what happens afterward? I mean, can, can you leave the movie at the theater or can you leave it on the DVD? If it's something that follows you around and now you're thinking about it and it's, it, it, you know, it's like this, this particularly violent scene or this line with the foul language stuck with me. If, if that's what's sticking with you in it, probably it's a place you shouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. However, if it's a story where you say somebody triumphed and overcame and I'm inspired by that and, and, and I, you know, I saw the story and I enjoyed the story or it was a you know, special effects spectacle and I enjoyed it. Now, I don't know that that's such a problem. It's, it's what sticks with you afterward. Mm -hmm. Is it the parts that are not good or is it the parts that were inspiring? Where, where did that go? And I, and I think that that's what it is. If you're going to see it because I like to, you know, see people use bad language, <laughs> it's probably not a good motive to go see a movie under any circumstances. If you're looking forward to that sex scene, it's like yeah. that you don't need to entertain it exactly. then. It's like if that stirs up lust in you, it's like you need to take that off. It's like, no, we're not going to entertain that, you know, um, it, because it's going to continue to affect your life. That, that's not something that like you said, stays at the movie theater, stays it on TV. It's something that is affecting your life afterwards. But another thing with, especially like horror movies, I, I kind of have a pretty hard stance on that because that's like, it's using fear as an entertainment. And the Bible says that fear is a spirit. He's not giving you a spirit of fear. So I'm not, I'm not gonna entertain a spirit of fear and allow that any access in my life. So, um, as I, I'm pretty well against those for sure. <laughs> but, like, there's there's really not anything redeeming out of that kind of a movie to me. Yeah, so, watch movies with heroes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think too, uh, and again, going along with what you said, Tim, is we've got to we got to look at is it important to the telling of the story? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're looking at a movie uh, uh, about the mafia or something like that. There's going to be language. There's mm -hmm. going to be violence. It's part of what the mafia is. And is it important to the story? But if it's just there, just for the shock value or just something like that. And then the other end of that, to actually answer the question, how do we make the choices, is, you know, seek the Spirit. Yeah. You know, what's the what's mm -hmm. Holy Spirit telling us? Mm -hmm. You know, is, is He saying it's okay? Yeah, if, you're, he, if you're feeling some, some pullback from that, you better listen to yeah, that. Yeah, you I need know. to listen Absolutely to that. Agree. You yeah. gotta seek Holy Spirit. Yeah. And because if you're not, then you're missing it all together and it doesn't matter whether it's important to the story or yeah. if it's if you haven't noticed, there's quite a bit of violence in the Bible too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, and and yet it's important to the story. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes it is. You know, and yeah. that's and that's my key to that. Yeah. yeah. Some people have actually used that argument on the other side of the argument, yes. you know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they call it a bloody religion. That's yeah. what some people have, yeah. have labeled mm -hmm. uh, Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. But did you want to contribute as well? Yeah, I think there needs to also be a little bit of caution as to, um, wow, more mature Christians can go ahead and maybe see the positive and uh, flush out the negative, and it's not necessarily going to impact them. But also there's that flip side about what about the younger generation mm -hmm. going and, and how things in movies, TikTok, and all those things do leave an impression and impact younger people, and even younger people, per se, in their relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
So there has to be some kind of balance, like a more mature person mm -hmm. may be able to handle it if they mm -hmm. you know, have a really strong foundation and relationship with their Heavenly Father. But when we're younger in our faith, we may be swayed a little bit to yeah. kind of take back some of those habits of old yeah, based upon. Yeah, because you can't leave it behind. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. right. And then mm -hmm. just also, we have to be mindful of the fact that, um, as I say, I want to try and do, I want to try and think, say, and do what's going to bring glory to my Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. And what is really going to be the best witness to. And sometimes I'm conscious of that when I make choices and even when I make the wrong choice, it's like, oh, if people saw me, am I really being the kind of witness that Jesus would want me to be? Mm -hmm. Or is this really what I want to broadcast out to people? As Paul talked about, you know, we have the freedom for ourselves, but is it really the best? Right. Yeah, don't use is the it, freedom to like, enslave yourself. Yeah. Or to uh, uh, bring down others. Right. True. If it can affect someone else. Right. And don't get me wrong, it's not like I haven't seen movies with profanity and other things, but... It's hard not to anymore. To, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I also want to be conscious of, of the, the message I'm sending to others, yep. but also, even though we try our best to make sure that things in this world do not affect us in a negative way, mm -hmm. but yet they do. Yeah. But then that's where it comes into play being a having a strong foundation and spending time in prayer with the Lord, spending time studying the Word, and spending time in Christian fellowship where some of your other Christians may not be very strong in those areas, so the things of the world can impact them in a negative way. Now, in your earlier comments, you did mention TikTok. Yeah. And uh, you may know, well, as of this taping, it was announced just last night uh, that a group was coming against TikTok in a lawsuit because of the, um, the way they feel it has impacted the minds of young people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is, is that something that we need to put on the watch as well? Well, yeah, think? social media and all those kind of stuff, you got to be real careful with that because there's enough garbage on that to pollute your mind yeah. for eternity, yeah. Do we it's have enough regulation of, of that? It's so a matter can... of consuming. Mm -hmm. Like, is, it, is this form of entertainment or social media, is this consuming you? Yeah. Uh, like it makes me think of the verses like don't be conformed. Are you being conformed to the things of the world? Mm -hmm. Or are you being transformed by the renewing of your mind mm -hmm. uh, according to Jesus? Mm -hmm. It's like there's when when we're spending so much time being immersed in that, there's a, a much higher likelihood that we're being conformed to the things of the world. Uh, rather than being transformed. <laughs> yeah. And I must, you know, then there's that other side of it. You, I brought up TikTok, but the only TikTok I've actually seen is clips that people have shown me. Mm -hmm. I don't even know enough about TikTok, mm -hmm. but so mm -hmm. do I need to educate myself more on that and other things, just like we've talked about no. how you... Protect, <laughs> protect your brain. Yeah, protect <laughs> yourself. Yeah, protect <laughs> yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I just I just feel like, in, in, you know, working with the kids in my church and things and we'll have, you know, a bunch of kids in on Wednesday nights. And I, I, I the thing that I'm concerned about, and I know we're going beyond the bounds of this question, but how addicted to their phones they actually are. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It just and, and that scares me. And that's got to be. And I don't I, first I've heard of the lawsuit you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But my guess is, is that's what the lawsuit is about, is the mm -hmm. addictive nature of that. Yep. You right. know, yep. stimulation or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you talk about limiting something. I mean, I would rather you go watch a three-hour movie with all the violence and profanity you could possibly get than pollute your mind with nine hours of mm -hmm. this just mind-numbing stuff on TikTok. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, just, I just feel like we, we haven't given that the respect. We haven't protected ourselves, and we certainly haven't protected our kids from it, and that's a problem. And I think mm -hmm. that's where, as you know, the family unit, your parents, they need to make sure that they're doing everything they can to provide their kids with a strong foundation yeah because you got to offset that somehow yeah absolutely mm -hmm. because we know at different ages kids believe that their parents don't know anything <laughs> and they know everything or their friends know more than their parents know so mm -hmm. when you've got those times and that's why spending time together as a family is so important which has kind of disappeared through time through the years that I mean, I grew up, we sat down together yeah, for the evening meal. It doesn't happen anymore. It doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. 
All right, well, it's just about break time, so why don't we take our break right here now and, and we'll come back. And when we do, we'd like to talk about um, mental health issues and how all that dovetails into um, good spiritual health and what the church is doing about all of that. So we'll be back with that in just a moment. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. Well, we are back and uh, we have a very interesting question here from you, our viewers. How can we make Christians feel more comfortable talking about mental health problems? Despite the fact that the topic is becoming more widely discussed, it can still be hard for a Christian to admit mental struggles. Yeah. And that's, that's well, an that's issue a, that's dear to your well, heart. It's, it's, it's a perfect segue from what we just ended before with is, uh, you know, where are all these mental health issues even coming from? Uh, you know, I understand people have problems and struggles. I, I absolutely get that. That's always been the case and always will be. But I, my concern is, is that everybody wants to discuss their mental health all the time and it's becoming a fad. It's almost like a, like a, like a, a badge of honor that I have depression or a badge of honor that I don't sleep or whatever it is. And I don't know that those are the kind, I mean, yes, we should discuss problems when they exist, but I don't know that we should be wearing them as, as, a, as a virtue signal to the world to say, Gosh, I just I feel terrible, and I, you know, and I, I feel terrible because people don't respect my who I think I am, and they don't do all these things. And I, I think that becomes a problem when uh, we want to make that be who we are. What's wrong? What's quote unquote wrong with us is the number one thing we want to bring out. And and I'm not, again, I'm not saying don't discuss problems. I'm saying let's see positive things too. Let's have positive conversations. Let's have uplifting conversations, not where we all sit around and decide who's the most depressed mm -hmm. in the group. Not, not just talk about Absolutely. the impact that the problem is having, That's right. what, what positive solutions. Yeah. In fact, it'd be that. almost better to say, okay, I have this issue, but let's talk about all the things it's taking away from me, which is a lot. You know, I, I don't have an active social life and I don't have friends and I don't, I don't have a job and, or whatever it is that, that this, this uh, problem is resulting in. Uh, and, and if you're going to talk about it, don't talk about how bad it is. Talk about how we can get over it. Talk mm -hmm. about how we can pray about it. How can I pray yeah. for you? Okay, you're in a dark season. Look, we've all been there. I've been there. I'm sure you've all been there. How can we pray for that and pull each other out of it rather than let's wallow in it and just yeah. enjoy yeah. it and how I'm, I'm oppressed by the world. I just, th this idea that, that, that victimhood is what we all aspire to has just got to stop. Well, yeah. with the advent of COVID, we certainly have a a additional mental issues that have come on the right. scene. Sure. And another part of the victory is discussing how, how you got over COVID. Right. Uh, particularly right. with the, the, what do they call it? Brain fog. Right. Yeah. Brain fog is one yeah. of the and, and, uh, and, and issues. And sure, we would need to discuss those things and we need to, to look for, for solutions to them. But it, the conversation should be geared toward finding a solution, not right. geared toward celebration of it. Yeah. That, that's when we start going down a bad road. Right. And when we get focused, I, First of all, I want to say that, that, that mental health issues are real, mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. we've got to start addressing them as real issues. But when we get focused on the ones that are, like you said, just sadness or victim, you know, we we lose sight of the real illness. Yeah, people that have is real to, problems. Yes. Yes, and we got to stop admiring the problems and start choosing to move forward. And that takes conversations. That takes uh, looking at situations. Uh, my father has been mentally ill for. 35 years mm -hmm. and he struggles mm -hmm. but you know part of the problem is the church has said for the last 35 years well if you have a mental illness well you must not be a good Christian mm -hmm. and we've got to stop saying those things mm -hmm. and looking at this as being real we mm -hmm. don't say that if somebody has liver disease well you have liver disease you must not be a good Christian we don't say those things mm -hmm. and yet we do that about mental health mental illness and some of it has been because we wallow in it mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, Go ahead, the bigger back. problem is the church not actually bringing solutions. Mm -hmm. So it's like if we had the reputation that we brought solutions to that, mm -hmm. then people would come. You know, that's what Jesus did. Come to He's like, well, people were sick. They were demonically oppressed. Mm -hmm. And 
people heard that Jesus had the solution for yes. that. So yes. they came, they opened up, no matter if it was a shameful thing. That's right. It's like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to go and do it because they have a, he has a solution for this, or now us, the church, they have a solution for that. So I would say uh, get trained in inner healing and deliverance ministry. It's like most, the people that I've ministered to that have mental illness, there's trauma, like abuse, physical, uh, verbal, uh, or emotional or sexual abuse in their past and they need healed of that. You know, there's yeah. a place that is chock full of fear, like anxiety is fear. Yes, it is. And it's like, well, you get that place healed up and filled with the love of God, the perfect love of the Father drives out all fear. Mm -hmm. And there is freedom from anxiety and mental illness in Christ. So how, how did you get to the place where you, you, you could accept this, when, when you've got people coming in? You know, some people would turn people away. Yeah. I'm talking well, about yeah, in some yeah, churches where the, yeah. perhaps mm -hmm. the pastor's not trained. Yeah. He doesn't realize the, the, the magnitude right. of the yeah. issue. Well, I started with training in inner healing and deliverance ministry. I really actually started with physical healing. And then I, I started getting into inner healing, soul healing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and freedom from demonic spirits. Yes. And uh, then I thought, well, gosh, that that seems pretty valuable too. <laughs> and, it's it like, and then once I got trained in it, I had people coming and they they were getting healed and set free and you know filled with joy and peace and restored into who God created them to be. And so that I just had to try it. I mean, I didn't really have people in my area that were doing that kind of thing, but I, I had trained, I had a basis. And then I was like, well, I'm stepping into it with you Jesus and you can you can do your job I'll do my job <laughs> <laughs> right right and, and, and the fascinating thing about what you're sharing is is you you got in to actually make it better yeah and that's exactly. that's what I hear you saying too Rick yes. is, is we get it to get it better I'm afraid a lot of people are getting into it just to celebrate it yeah yes. that that's what I, mm -hmm. I have witnessed that's more times than I care doing. absolutely you know when you yeah. look at oh you called it wallowing in it yeah yeah and mm -hmm. just just let it pour and, over me and just celebrate admiring it admiring the problem right rather than fixing it right and, and to me to me you're not helping anybody by feeding into their issues yeah. whatever the issues are mm -hmm. you're not helping them nope. and 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 I think that that's what we've lost is is the idea that we're actually trying to heal we're trying yeah. to fix like you said mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and instead of just, you know, coming along and going, oh, oh my gosh, oh, yeah. and that, that just, mm -hmm. I don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, I, go, I go back to what I mentioned, the story about the, uh, the, the lady that um, was an adulteress and uh, they brought her before Jesus mm -hmm. to see what he was going to do because yeah. mm -hmm. the law says she should be stoned. And when Jesus talked with her, he not only accepted her and forgave her, he said, go and sin, sin no, no more. more. And that, don't, don't wallow it. Don't go to the next guy and the next guy yep. and the next guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, go yeah. and sin no more. And he no saved more. her, but he didn't celebrate. I mean, he celebrated her, but not yes. what she was doing. Yes. It's a big distinction mm -hmm. that we have yes. lost. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's because it's all about let's love other people. Mm -hmm. Let's love other well, it's people. It's just narcissism. Yeah. And I've dealt with situations where um, I think they've experienced the sympathy that they receive from other people when they are wallowing or down low and they're not willing to take the necessary steps to really be pulled out. And so then part of their security, their comfort is, well, I'm getting sympathy, I'm feeling good for a short time. It, feels, it becomes a part of their identity. Then. It becomes yeah. a part of their and identity. And so then every so often then they're seeking out and what they're looking for is just somebody to offer them sympathy, mm -hmm. to love them, to comfort them. It's just a more acceptable drug. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That, that yeah. is 100% correct. Yeah. And it's like a Band-Aid yeah. over the problem that is very temporary. And then they're right back where they started. So it's, you know, kind of like a victim mentality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that if I do this, then they will come and offer me comfort and I'll feel good. And it is kind of like a drug. And mm -hmm. you can tell the difference. Mm -hmm. sure you yeah. can tell when it's real and when it is something that right. yeah. somebody's just seeking yeah. something. And, 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 the, and the sad part of that is the people who are doing it for attention, like you mm -hmm. said, because I agree with you completely. 
are actually more detrimental to the people yes, you're talking about who exactly. actually have it because now other people look and go, well, y'all are just faking, which right. is not true. Not everyone is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and that's the scary exactly. part is that you can't get healing with, with a situation like that because we're all trying to explain it or celebrate it rather than trying to address it like, exactly. like you were talking about. Exactly. All right. We uh, uh, have a question here that came in from our viewers. And um, I know that when we were talking about this question earlier on, everybody was... <laughs> I didn't know if you had the courage to ask this but, one. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this question, is purgatory a real place? Is purgatory a real place? No. Lady, <laughs> gentlemen, is it? No? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The answer is no. Okay. Yeah. You qualify your answer. Well, you're, first of all, let's be clear. You're talking to a table full of Protestants, so we're not going to buy into it anyways. But... Uh, the, the, the concept of purgatory, just for those who may not know, it's the place where you go after you die so your sins can be burned off. Essentially, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, the problem with that concept is that the, what happened on the cross, my understanding mm -hmm. is that happened there. And if it didn't happen there, then why did, it happen, why did the cross happen at all? You know, if, if, sins, if sins weren't forgiven, if God's grace wasn't a real thing at that point, then what's purgatory going to do about it? Mm -hmm. That's where I struggle. I know there, uh, our Catholic sisters and brothers would take issue with that, and I, I respect that. But, but as a Protestant, that's the part I struggle with is, you know, if, if there is this place where sin can be burned off, then why did we need Jesus in the first mm -hmm. place? Mm -hmm. It's still man trying to fix a man problem Correct. rather than God fixing man's problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it turns it back into works-based yeah. salvation. Right. Because exactly. they're burned off based on prayers of the Correct. families and friends. <clears throat> Which yeah. is what Jesus got free, freed us from, you know, exactly. it's like, exactly. you don't have to, to follow the law in order to receive salvation. It's like, you have to follow Jesus. And, you know, the word says that he's clothed us with righteousness. I mean, it even says that, you know, he died that we might be the righteousness of God. It's like, well, he has made us righteous. He's washed us white as snow. How much better of a done deal does this need yeah, to be? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's really, you know, there's this aspect of like, well, we're, we're not living perfect, but we are, we are made perfect by him. Mm -hmm. And now our, our walk with, with Christ here on earth is, is uh, moving into that perfection. It's like, you know, I'm going to actually walk out the righteousness that Jesus gave me and he clothed me with. And uh, it's, but it's not something that we got to earn anymore. Uh, nobody's got to pay our way or nobody's got to pray enough for us. Did. Yeah, exactly. you can't Jesus already, he's, it's done. That's why he said it is finished. Mm -hmm. You know, he atoned for your sins. You don't have to atone for him anymore. Yeah, very good. And it's all about living in, in relationship with the God that provides that kind of grace. Yeah. And that, that, that's where everything gets changed. And a lot of these things date back. If you look at some of the Catholic history, a lot of these things date back to them trying to be apologetic to the unsaved. And mm -hmm. so they change their beliefs rather than, and rather than trying to change the people to believe what Christ, you know, you look at, you know, look at Peter, you know, he's the first Pope and yet he was married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. I yeah. never thought of it that way. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it, it, it became a point of, and I'm not against apologetics, please don't hear that. But I think we've got to be careful that apologetics doesn't change us. Mm -hmm. Uh, because then that's the kind of things that get created uh, and the questions that happen and the burdens that people have. I mean, we've placed burdens on people thinking that they have to pray so many prayers for their loved one to get to heaven eventually. And that's just not the case. Christ did it or he didn't. Yeah, Christ true. was real. Yeah. Christ lived sinless. Christ was born of a virgin. Christ died. Christ was raised on the third day. Christ returned to heaven or he didn't. And that, you know, we can't add to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very well put. Okay. Uh, another question uh, from our viewers. How do I discern between God's leading and my own thoughts and feelings? This is a person who wants to do the right thing. They're, mm -hmm. they're seeking God. They're seeking God for his counsel and the like. They want to be sure that, that, that what they're sensing is not being tainted by their own feelings or their own desires or their own preferences. Yeah. There's a very simple test that you can run to determine that is that is whatever that inspiration is, whatever that voice, whatever, whatever it is that you're following, do you ever disagree with it? Because if you disagree with it, then it's not you. 
But however, if that voice is always, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do, that's probably not God. Because like, eventually he's going to push you outside of your comfort zone. So, sounds yes. almost like my, what my stepfather, he was a state representative for 26 years yeah. in the Ohio legislature. And he said, well, I talk to myself all the time because I get better answers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's exactly that's right. So, that's right. God, God has a tendency of asking for big things. And, uh, and uh, if, God, if, that vo if that inspiration never inspires you to something greater than yourself, then it is yourself. Yeah. Yep. It's not God. If it doesn't yeah. change you. I uh, right. agree yeah. with that. There's yeah. One time I was sitting at a restaurant and I saw these couple over here and I heard the Lord say, give them $50 and then pray for them. And I'm like, well, I know that's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I didn't come I up with like exactly. my $50. Exactly. <laughs> Which also goes back to the, the movie and the music question too. <laughs> you know, some of it is what we put in is what's going to come out. Yeah. Yep. You know, and mm -hmm. if, it, if what we're putting in isn't of God, then things of God aren't going to come out. Yeah. Yeah. Spending yeah. time with him. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's like he, Jesus says, my sheep will hear my, know my voice. So here you got to spend time hearing when you know the truth, when you know the, the author of the word, <laughs> it's like, well, I know when he's saying something that that, that sounds like <laughs> like mm -hmm. the god like god i know well, yeah. and but, you're not in this alone and it's you yeah. know is it really from god or is it not from god well let me go to god in prayer let me study god's word but truly be open yeah. to what is going to be revealed to you and christian fellowship getting together with those christians that that are going to be able to you can bounce ideas off of yeah. and and then sometimes just give it time and ask God for another mm -hmm. sign to confirm mm -hmm. what direction you think he wants you to go. Yeah. And um but you know, you're not alone in making these decisions. God wants us to be in fellowship with other people. Mm -hmm. He yeah. wants us to spend time with Him, spend time in well, His I mean, Word. That's, that's what we're doing right here, right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. I, and I think one of the things that, that, that I would say to, to whoever wrote this question is, is just be very, very careful about that voice if you never, if you never have a problem yep. with it, if it never scares you, if it never pushes you beyond what you think you can do, because God will, mm -hmm. will, at least eventually, get to that point. I mean, he did, Jesus did that with all of the disciples and, and all, all the people, and, and God the Father even got that way with Jesus. Yeah. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane and said, oh, maybe some other way would be great. But, but at the end of the day, uh, it's going to push us beyond what we think we can do. The yeah. very that first was, litmus test should be, does it line up with the well, Lord? Well, yeah. 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 of course. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But he we haven't mentioned that. Hopefully that goes without saying. Yes. But. <laughs> but he will push us to the point where it's beyond what we can handle so that we oh, yeah. are dependent right. upon exactly. him. Right. Right. It's exactly. And I think it's well, okay to question it. A little bit. Oh, I think yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you want to make sure you're right. Yes. Yeah. right. Yeah. Well, we're all out of time. Very good <laughs> solutions. Very good solutions. Thank you very much. And, uh, and uh, for our, our audience, I thank you, too, for the expertise you brought here. And it's so full of God's word. That's what's so important. Mm -hmm. Well, that's our program for now. And uh, we will be back again next week with uh, more of your viewer letters so that we can answer them and uh, give you some really good uh, perspective on how to handle life. Thank you very much for being with us. Until next week, I'm Bill Harris. Bye-bye for now. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.